Hey guys, Abel here, back with my first training update video on this new training cycle that I've been talking about in a couple of videos. If you have been following my channel for a while, then you could have seen in the past couple of weeks that I've been talking about a new training template and new training cycle that I will be starting out with. I Hopefully, I will be able to put some links in this video where I can link to those videos where I talked about this. I did a solo video where I briefly talk you over how this is going to look like. And just two weeks ago, Berge Fuggerly, who is my partner now at SSD and also my coach, he visited me and we did a video together where we talked all of this through in pretty decent detail. So um, hopefully uh, I will be able to link to those videos. Um, and this is going to be my first update where I'm going to let you know how this is going after following this with two weeks. And my plan is going to be to update you each week as I'm progressing through this training cycle. Just a short plug, if you actually want to get your hands on this training template and customize it for yourself and implement it for yourself, then uh, it is actually available at a pre-sale price in the links that are provided in the description below. It's going to come with a bunch of cool bonuses. There will also be a nutritional package with it and some other cool bonuses like Birge Fagerli's My Reps ebook, the Zero Carb ebook. So I definitely recommend that you check those resources out. And um, with that, I want to give you first a brief 60 second recap as to what you should know about this. I just did a two weeks deconditioning phase, which actually ended two weeks ago. It was really handy in the sense that I had a week that I spent in Greece on a vacation. So that was the first week of this deconditioning phase. It was really convenient that I could just completely take my mind off of the gym. I was away from my normal environment, so I didn't have the temptation to... Uh, you know, jump ship and abandon the, the original plan and return to the gym ahead of time. The second week when I was back in my normal environment close to my gym, that was a little bit tough and I felt a bit uneasy and started to get a little bit OCD and had some moments when I was like, I don't give a shit, I'm just going to go back to the gym and destroy myself. But I was actually lucky in, in that Berge visited me at the end of that week and I knew that he would put me through my first workout as I'm returning to the gym. So that served me as a little bit of a carrot in front of my face. So um, he visited me, went to the gym together and put me through that workout. And that first workout was just a single set on each exercises of pretty high rep work, sort of submaximal, close to failure, but not completely to failure. And on all the exercises, that's all we did. One single set on some exercises, two sets where it was just too easy. And now that I'm on my own, I increase the loads and transition into the my rep phase, which is going to last for a couple of weeks. And eventually I'm going to abandon the my rep phase and I'm going to get into some more mechanical loading focused uh, straight set and cluster set type of training with heavier weights. So that will be interesting at the end as well. But as of now, I'm only at the first week of the my rep phase. So um, quickly want to touch first before I get into that on the deconditioning stuff, because this is something that is definitely new to me. And, you know, I've done some deloads in the past. I followed some traditional kind of training setups where I was doing the maybe like four or five, six weeks accumulation and then one week deloading with um, slightly reduced loads and lower volumes. I also used a lot of reactive deloading and auto regulation ever since I got, you know, somewhat educated about training. But having these dedicated complete stress phases uh, every couple of months at least, this is something that I've never really done. I only did complete rest weeks when I felt like something was flaring up or I just felt really burnt out on training. But now, after I've done this two weeks of deconditioning, I can definitely see the clear benefits both from a mental perspective and also from a physical perspective. You know, from the mental side of things, for one, when you're doing a training cycle and you know that you have X amount of weeks to uh, really push yourself hard and after that you're going to take a complete rest phase, it definitely makes you really motivated and focused on your training. And also while you're taking that actual rest phase, it just has a way of completely reigniting your motivation and passion for the gym. Um, you know, of course, if you're like me, you're always kind of passionate about training and you're always motivated. But still, it's easy to get into that kind of slump where you're pushing yourself hard and you're not really sure whether it's working anymore, but you're scared of doing less because you've already put in all that work. And there's sort of that sunk cost fallacy sort of uh, thing that happens when you're just too attached to what you've been doing up until that point and you're scared of doing less. And after you take a dedicated time off from the gym, then you all of a sudden become much more appreciative for a more measured, moderate amount of volume that you're doing in the gym. So that side of it is really, really nice. And of course, from the physical side of things, 
uh, all the niggles and inflammation that you inevitably gather when you're training hard for an extended period, those just tend to heal up really nicely if you take like two weeks off of the gym. And, and also just to illustrate how effective this can be, you know, upon returning to the gym and just doing a single set of like 20 reps sort of submaximally, like I was pretty sore in some muscle groups, not in all, but my hamstrings, quads, uh, in my upper back, those were pretty damn sore. And earlier on, there's no way that I would have gotten sore from something like that. And, you know, of course, it is debated whether soreness is a valid indicator of an effective workout. But one thing is for sure that it is an indication that what you're doing is disruptive and, you know, challenging. So uh, that was the first workout upon returning after the deconditioning phase. And really, like, the feeling that I got when I returned to the gym after being away for, for two weeks was kind of like having a massive cheat meal after dieting hard for several months. I just had this uh, crazy adrenaline and dopamine rush when I first stepped into the gym, so that was really cool. And now, after I did my first week of my rep phase, uh, like I get sore as fuck in most of my muscle groups, even in my side delts, which you know I have to move heaven and earth to get them sore. So really interesting, and these my rep workouts. They are really short and efficient. You know, me, I have a pretty ambitious variety in terms of exercise selection. And even with those, I get these workouts in in like 30 to 40 minutes at most. And that's if I'm being kind of inefficient with my use of time in there. So they are short workouts, but you definitely need to exert yourself. Like these workouts are not easy. Um, and also what's really nice, and that's kind of the beauty of my reps, is that they just auto-regulate your volume amount really nicely. So in case you don't know what my reps are, if you're following my channel, you probably know what those are. But basically, you're doing a set of high rep work pretty close to failure. And after that, you're resting 10 to 15 minutes and really you're just auto-regulating that with a couple of deep breaths. And after that, you're doing a couple of three to five rep sets and you're just repeating those as long as you could you can repeat the rep amount that you achieved on your first my rep set so it could be something like 15 reps pretty close to failure five deep breaths after that three to five reps a couple of deep breaths again and then three to five reps and you're repeating those as long as you achieved the rep amount that you achieved on your first three or five rep sets which you've done after the activation set so it could look something like 15, 5, 5, 5, 4, or it could be even 15, 3, 2. You know, both of them would be correct. And the nice thing about that is that your volume amount is auto-regulating based on your recovery state or how much you're recovered and how fresh you are. So, you know, depending on how fresh I am and um, how on point I am with my recovery, if I translate these myo rep sets into straight sets, then... It could, anywhere, it could be anywhere from 8 sets to like 15, 16 sets uh, per muscle group per week. And, you know, both of those volume amounts are completely okay. You know, that's your recovery need should correlate, I think, with um, how much volume you're doing per week. Um, as far as the structure of my training, right now I'm shooting for a weekly muscle group uh, frequency of 3. And that's going to be the weekly frequency that we are going to recommend in this training template. Anywhere from two to four, really. So depending on how ambitious you are with your training and um, you know how much you're prioritizing certain muscle groups, you could be doing you know two workouts a week, two full body sessions. That would be okay. You could be doing three full body sessions, even four full body sessions if you if you're more advanced. But you could also be doing an upper lower upper lower split, or you could be doing an upper lower upper, and then the next week lower upper lower. Uh, kind of set up and just rotating through like that. For now, what I've done for myself and the way I've structured it for myself is that I have an upper lower uh, setup and I'm repeating those three times. So I have uh, six weekly sessions in total um, and each of the muscle groups get hit three times a week. But the nice thing about that is that if for whatever reason I can only get in like four sessions a week, then maybe I can just merge two of these upper lower workouts into a full body session and then I can still get in my weekly volume and frequency. So that's really nice and convenient for me and these six short sessions a week work really nicely with my current schedule but later I will probably modify this as I'm getting into the heavier loading and you know the weights get heavier and also probably I will benefit more from more days in between hitting the same muscle group. I will either transition into an upper lower upper lower split and just have four sessions in total or maybe I will even do three full body sessions a week. I'm yet to decide on that and I will probably consult about that with Berge as the weeks progress. 
Um, I made a couple of interesting observations about exercise selection, and some of those probably should have been obvious from the get-go, but um, when you're doing MyRep workouts exclusively, then it's really important that your ex exercise selection eliminates excessive time spent with the setup of exercises. So for example, uh, you know, one reason besides safety reasons why squats don't work well with myo reps is because you need to, you know, re-rack the weight and unrack the weight. And that just, you know, if you only rest 10 to 15 seconds in between two sets, you don't want to spend valuable seconds further fatiguing yourself with the setup of the exercise. And I can al already tell that Romanian deadlifts will just not work very well with this setup. It should have been obvious, but I started out with uh, Romanian deadlifts and man, I almost passed out. Like it was so tough. So I will probably replace them either with leg curls or I will replace them with back extensions. But uh, I'm going to consult about this with Berge as well. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to mention on why I'm going to have less sessions and the weeks as the weeks progress is because I will simply have less exercises, which will allow for you know full body workouts and still get in all of those exercises that I want to do more efficiently. So right now I'm doing uh, arm isolation work and a fair amount of delt isolation work as well, uh, which are completely fine now with these lighter loads. But probably what I'm going to do as the weeks progress is that I'm going to take out some of these exercises. So I'm probably going to take out tricep isolation work, but I'm also going to take out the chest flies that I'm now doing on one of my upper body workouts for chest. And I'm going to be doing only bench press and push-ups probably, or only bench press. Um, but then also my triceps are going to get more indirect tricep work with the heavier weights. And the same thing with uh, the straight arm pull downs or leg prayers, whatever you want to call them. Probably I'm going to take those out as the weeks progress and I'm going to be doing pull-ups and the ring chin-ups for my lats, but then also my biceps are going to get more indirect work with those heavier weights. So exercise selection variety will go down as the weeks progress and thereby also the sessions will get shorter and there will be more room for merging these workouts. But you know, if you're not crazy ambitious with your exercise selection and you will have a more minimalistic setup with, you know, maybe a push and a pull exercise for upper body, for example, in horizontal and vertical planes, which is completely uh, a workable way of setting up your training uh, sessions, then, you know, you can be starting out with just full body workouts right from the get go. Uh, but you will be seeing when the program comes out, uh, we will be uh, providing with different templates in which you can set it up for yourself, depending on your schedule, um, how serious about you are about your training and also how advanced you are. So um, that is pretty much it on the training front. Um, workouts are not easy. I have to push myself hard and I'm pretty gassed out at the end of these workouts. But at the same time, they are really efficient and I don't need to spend a ton of time in the gym, which is something that I definitely appreciate. You know, uh, even with these six sessions that I'm doing at the moment, earlier on, it was a real pain in the ass when my training sessions would have lasted anywhere from an hour and a half to even up to two hours Doing those six days a week, I mean, that definitely has a way of just, uh, you know, creating a giant hole in your schedule and just a giant gap in the middle of the day, which is, you know, not spent uh, being productive, being with, you know, loved ones, friends, all of that stuff. Um, so that is more or less on the trading front. Maybe later on, I will realize that I missed something out. But if you have questions, uh, feel free to post them in the comment section. I briefly want to touch on the diet and food side of things. You know, I experimented with everything from higher carb, lower fat diets to uh, co completely zero carb carnivorous diets in this past year, um, in large part to the influence of Berge. And, you know, that's a really cool thing to do, I think, with dieting, just experimenting with different setups and see what your body responds best to. I definitely found that I can tolerate zero carb carnivorous diets really well, and it definitely has its clear benefits. What I found now for myself is that having a pretty high fat, higher protein, largely meat and protein based diet is a really nice way for me to go about things. But titrating in just a measured amount of carbs, which will definitely keep me out of ketosis and, you know, will definitely not get me follow a, a carnivorous diet completely, is just a really nice way for me to both reap the benefits of a higher fat, higher protein diet and get the mental stability and energy level stability that you can get from that but at the same time still get the acute energy boost from the carbs which can be nice before a workout and also some of that kind of serotoninergic kind of happy feeling that you get you can get from those carbs so i have some fruits and berries which i have with most of my meals and really 
satiety and appetite management is just incredible at the moment. I basically never feel hungry and I almost feel like uneasy when I eat my meals because it's like, well, like I'm not hungry, so maybe I just shouldn't eat. Um, but I get those meals in anyway because I manage to stay lean and as long as my performance is good and, you know, body fat is nicely controlled and leanness is nicely controlled, then, you know, why not eat as much as you can get away with? Um, and speaking of that, I, um, one thing I started experimenting with is extending my feeding window and also playing around with higher meal frequencies. Not crazy high, like I always sort of been a fan of three or four meals a day, airing more so on the side of three or airing more so on the side of four meals a day. But one thing that probably all of you can attest to who have tried higher fat, lower carb diets is that lower meal frequencies are perfectly workable with these. So having only three or even two meals a day when you're eating a pretty high fat, high protein diet is completely fine and appetite is very nicely managed. But one thing that I found is that it kind of has a way of just entraining a little bit too much food preoccupation. And even perhaps more importantly, it has a way of entraining the habit of over-consuming food when you eat your meals, simply because when you know that your next meal is going to be seven, eight, ten hours away, it's easy. It's kind of inevitable to get into the mindset of, well, I'm not sure that I should go for that extra plate of food or that extra serving, but I'm going to go for it anyway because I don't want to get crazy hungry when my next meal is still like three, four hours away. So I kind of found that by having four meals a day now, it's really kind of detraining that habit of over-consuming food in any specific meal just to be sure and also just completely eliminates food preoccupation for me. Um, you know, it tends to have the same effect if, even if you're eating a higher carb, lower fat diet and your meals are not as satiating per meal. But now that the meals are super satiating and you're having them pretty frequently, it just has a really nice way of completely eliminating food preoccupation, have a really nice steady influx of calories and um, really just gives you a really nice mental stability and stability in terms of energy levels. And especially if you, have, you, know, you had your history with um, some messed up eating behavior or overeating or any of these stuff, this kind of an eating pattern with um, you know, really satiating meals relatively frequently, it just completely kills uh, any of those tendencies uh, for many people at least. So this is what I'm experimenting with now and really I've never felt this unbreakable in terms of like mental stability and mindset around dieting and food. And I almost felt feel like some of those people that I almost looked at them as these magical people who say these things like, it's like, ah, oh, I don't want to get this meal in. It's just a chore while they manage to stay lean. And now I definitely have a lot of these periods. So uh, things are looking exciting in terms of training and uh, eating and dieting. Um, I'm excited where things are headed. And I'm also excited to keep you guys updated with uh, how things are going to unfold. So, you know, as I'm progressing with this training and as I'm getting into the different phases of this training cycle, as the loads are going to get heavier, I will have some pretty interesting things to show you as to how things are looking in the gym. And uh, I will be curious to see how it works out for you guys as well if you decide to give it a go. So uh, once again, if you're interested in implementing some of these uh, training and nutritional concepts that we talk about these days on the podcast, Myself and Berge, when we are doing these webinars together, then definitely check out the links that are in the description. Uh, like I said, the training and nutritional package that we will be coming out with are available at a discounted pre-sale price. If you opt into our newsletter, then you can get an even bigger discount on them. So uh, take advantage of that as, as long as you can. And the training and nutritional package will be live for actual use on the 27th of August. At least that's our a very solid and ambitious plan. And as always, join the Sustainable Self-Development Facebook community on Facebook. It is also linked in the description and join the cool discussions that we have in there and tune into the webinars that we do with Berge now weekly and see them live when we are doing them live. So um, I believe that's all I had to say. I hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know if you have any questions. And if you haven't done it already, subscribe to this channel to support this channel and also to be in tune with cool content that will be coming out in the near future. So thanks for hanging out up until now, guys, and see you next time.